I have a weird passion for all things of the past. The very fact that they're already gone sort of elevates them in my eyes. And that's why I have such an obsession with history and the people who have long been dead, especially the famous ones who led lives of notoriety. The Romans are one such example. Their history is full of notorious people who have been dead for about two millennia, and that's why I'm maniacal about trying to bring them back to life. Popeia Sabina, in this case, was the second wife of Nero and the Queen of Rome in the first century AD. She's one of the stereotypical vipers of history, and by that I mean her life is defined by ambition and the acquisition of power by any means. She allegedly manipulated Nero into assassinating his own mother, Agrippina, then killing his first wife, Octavia, and then finally into marrying Popeia herself. She managed to get Nero to give her the title of Augusta, which is like the highest honor of a queen of Rome, and which was typically given, I think, to the empress posthumously. So you can see how ambition intertwines with megalomania as you try to reach your reputation of greatness and symbolic immortality even before you die. Popeia's story then goes hand in hand with Nero's psychopathic rampage, when after the great fire of Rome, the government blames the disaster on the Christian community in the city. So on behalf of the imperial family, there comes a great purge of Christians, where men, women, and children were burned alive, crucified, or torn apart by animals in the gladiatorial arenas in the city. It's not certain whether Popeia had a hand in that, but it's also not certain whether she opposed it, which she most likely did not. The symbol on the brooch in the portrait is a symbol of that, a quiet reminder of the events that defined Popeia's life and reign. And speaking of her life, the end of that was supposedly just as gruesome. She's generally believed to have died in childbirth, but the Roman authors from the era described Nero as having killed her by kicking her in the stomach while she was pregnant, or even stomping her to death by jumping on her abdomen. We need to keep in mind, though, that that's basically ancient Rome's yellow press, and these authors hated Nero, hence the high possibility of colorful propaganda. It is, after all, typically known that Nero was utterly in love with Popeia, and gave her a lavish and exotic funeral. So as with all things in history, especially the history of the ancient world, we cannot really know the truth. We can only know bits and pieces of the different opinions at the time, and use those to piece together our own picture of the dead person. That's what I did with Popeia and her portrait. I wanted to give her a look of confidence, and at the same time, ambiguity of character. She smiles at me, but is that smile good or vile, or some mixture of both? We can never reach the truth, and I wanted that feeling to be present in my painting as well. She tells me something, but can I believe her? Can I feel comfortable with her? She looks at me with a thousand thoughts, and yet she remains quiet. And she always will, in death, ever smiling, ever puzzling ever captivating to me.